After three years, they'd raised less than half the money they'd hoped for. But on April 15, 1949, undeterred, they gathered in their makeshift studio for the first day of broadcasting. Eleanor McKinney. We didn't feel it was real. I mean, you do all this work and raise the money and make a decision to start it on a shoestring. And that day, everything was at last minute till on the air. And then Lou stepped up to the microphone and it moved us all. In time past, many romantic feelings were associated with radio broadcasting. But KPFA itself is a real place only a few steps up from the street, an instrument for real thought and serious intercourse, an integrating aspect of the community. Denied an AM license, they had to settle for FM, which very few radios received in 1949. And KPFA's signal barely reached the Berkeley city limits. It was not Lou Hill's grand vision, but it was a start. Two of the world's leading scientists have agreed to debate the issue of fallout and disarmament. Each will speak from personal convictions based upon experience. Once upon a time, there was a man who had two sons. And the older one was all right, but the younger one was very quiet. He used to sit by the fire and keep his feet warm in the ashes. You know, the fact that Americans use the word genius as a noun they imply that one's born a genius, in a way, just in the use of the word. Whereas I've always had a conviction that genius, or lack of it, is purely a matter of laziness or a deliberate effort. The reason Alan Watts. why, trying intentionally to concentrate is self-frustrating, is that it is what the Zen people call putting legs on a snake. It is a confusing irrelevance, trying to do what one is already doing. Langston Hughes. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. Eleanor McKinney. To everyone, it was an opportunity of a lifetime. It really was bringing ideas and goals and longings into a practical reality. Eleanor McKinney from the documentary KPFA on the Air by filmmakers Veronica Silver and Sharon Wood. Today marks the 60th anniversary of Pacifica Radio. We'll be back with more from the documentary in a minute. People get ready by the impressions here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're on the road in our 70-city Community Voices community media tour. Today is the 60th anniversary of Pacifica Radio as we return to the documentary KPFA on the air by filmmakers Veronica Silver and Sharon Wood. It's narrated by Alice Walker. In 1964, students at the University of California, Berkeley, staged a protest calling on the university administration to lift a ban on on-campus political activities that launched what came to be known as the free speech movement. This is Mario Savio, the leader of the student sit-ins. My name is Mario Savio. I'm chairman of University Friends of SNCC. I've been one of the people who have been meeting with the deans here to see if we can have freedom of speech at the University of California. If you don't stand up for your freedom now, you're dead, guys. KPFA had barely survived an attack on his own freedom of speech. It would now commit itself to bringing the students' cause to the larger community. If the administration does not accept full political rights on this campus, we will be back for direct action until we have total democracy. On December 1st, the free speech movement announced that a round-the-clock sit-in would be held in Sproul Hall. We want all your support. This is everyone's issue. Get on. It's free speech. Fight them. Don't let them do this. At 7 p.m., the doors were closed, and police announced that anyone who remained in the building did so in violation of the law. You have five minutes to leave the building or you will be arrested. I don't know what's happening to these kids, but it looks, it looks horrible. They're tugging. 
grabbing them by their feet and throwing them down the stairs. One kid is now being pulled feet first down the stairs. Some other cops are grabbing him. Well, we'll report as a suppression. All right, okay, okay, all right, okay. Well, we're moving. Fine, okay. All right. By the time 800 students were arrested in December 1964, KPFA had become the voice of the student the movement. They ordered us to get out of the way until they've gotten this cleaned up. And when student activists began to confront the war in Vietnam, KPFA's coverage fueled the movement's growing strength. Dale Miner. For some 45 minutes now, the battle has been raging on the streets of Da Nang. We are now situated halfway between the two forces, and we're in a hollowed out building here. I didn't want to go to Vietnam to end the war. I wanted to go there because I wanted to go there and do that story. I had, not too long before, been one of them. I was in Korea. A number of young Vietnamese hiding in here also, and the shots are firing furiously up and down the street. Somebody up there has been hit. God damn. It was as close as I wanted. Dale Miner. Pacifica was uh, one of the earliest voices opposing the Vietnam War, asking critical questions of the Vietnam War, asking critical questions of American involvement there. Behind the guns of the Vietnam Pacifica was invaluable in getting some of these things into the atmosphere. You hook together political activists and cultural activists and an avant-garde and a bunch of really crazy people, and it was out of that mess that uh, that this synergy happened that created exciting things. Alan Snittow. Suddenly, something went wrong. All the details aren't in yet, but it appears a pump in the Three Mile Island reactor's cooling system broke down. That particular moment when the reactor started to melt down we went on the air, took everything else off the air on KPFA, and just went on continuous broadcast alert. We have absolutely no question about the safety of nuclear plants as a result of this mishap. We do not refer to it as a nuclear accident because it was not that. How can you say it's not an accident when radiation is being detected as far away as 16 miles? Eileen Alfandari, who'd been working on these issues for a long time, called all of the nuclear engineers, all the people who'd done exposés of this industry and so forth. It sounds like a, a very serious accident. Certainly they have a leak in the primary system. But it sounds like and what we were saying was 100% opposite what the nuclear industry was saying and what was being reported on the media. And it really was a moment that showed the power of what this medium could be. This nation cannot abide the communization of Central America. Good morning and welcome to Pacifica Radio's live gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the Iran-Contra hearings from Washington, D.C. I'm Larry Bensky in the Senate caucus room. Strangely enough, a hush has fallen over this room as Lieutenant Colonel North has entered. I'll never forget after Iran-Contra in 1987, I was at some media event and a reporter came up from the all-news station. And he came up to me and he said, you're Larry Bensky. He said, I want to tell you, I listened to so much of that Iran-Contra, that's the best live broadcasting I ever heard. Here is the opening gavel, and so I don't take it so much as personal praise, but how wonderful it is, despite all the poverty we have and all the internal aggravation of Pacifica, that we have this freedom to cover stories and expose the illegitimate uses of power.